Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is well. I can't believe we're almost in April now. This is uh, this year is flying by. I just wanted to start this video with a uh, means of apology, really, because I did watch the last video back a few days ago just to see where I'd got, and the the sort of video editing and the angles were just really awful. So I apologise for that. I did mention my edit video editing skills are very poor. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this and I think when I'm filming um, snippets in portrait mode and then moving to landscape it's it's just making it for not very good video watching because you're constantly trying to change the the phone round from one side to the other so I think off the back of that what I'll probably try to do for this one is just film everything in portrait on my phone on the same way for every snippet and then when I piece it all together hopefully that'll be um, easier watching so, like I said, just wanted to apologise for that up front. So, the second um, thing I'd like to talk about is how I'm going to display the house. So, this has been on my mind quite a bit lately for um, a number of reasons. I now have it, as I've, I've probably mentioned, back in the back room and I need to start thinking about how I'm going to display it. Now, with this house... My other houses and most people's houses will go on a chest of drawers quite easily if it's a sturdy piece of wood um, and that's all well and good and it's a nice height then to, to display. With this house, because it's quite big, um, it's, you know, I need something that's quite low down anyway-ish, but it's also very wide because of the courtyard at the front. So a normal chest of drawers is going to be not sufficient at all for this project. So I've been having a think. I did come up with maybe getting a, a bespoke piece of 25mm MDF cut and then adding some heavy duty caster wheels. But again, it just means it's very, very low to the floor. So to look in the basement rooms, you'd have to be real. You'd have to be sat on the floor, basically. So again, it's not the best way to display it. So I've been going back and forth in my mind, having to think about maybe a wide coffee table. But again, I'm struggling to get the right size. So I've reached out to um, a couple of people and one of them, um, bless him, came back, actually phoned me straight away pretty much on uh, yesterday, on Saturday, which was the dollhouse builder. And I've asked them about maybe making a bespoke MDF cabinet for, um, you know, that, that it will sit on, which will then give me storage space underneath. Um, and it's obviously going to be nice to display it on. Now, I don't, I've no idea how much this will cost, but he did mention to me that the price of wood has gone up something like 149% since last year. So I don't expect it's going to be cheap. I'll sh be transparent and share all the, the details with you. Um, but I think it's such a nice project. It does need to be displayed properly. So I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so just to give you an update of where we are, I've done a little bit more tiling. Once this is all done, obviously it will need grouting. Um, I've not been too worried about these bits on the end because the door lip will cover that. So I've just made it easy for myself where I need to just put a full tile in. Um, and obviously the door um, the door lip is going to come over that like I showed you in the last video. So yeah, we need to get this tiling done and then we need to tackle the dreaded stairs. So just to show you my workspace here, it is certainly a labour of love. Every tile needs to be sanded, um, some of them need to be cut, and then I'm just using the normal Gorilla Glue to, um, to glue them down. Okay, so that's all finished in there. It has taken longer than I thought. It's been a good few hours because, like I said, each individual tile, even if you're not cutting them for the edges, needs to be sanded down so that they go together quite well. One thing I have noticed, and it is probably my fault, um, I bought the boxes. I bought two of these boxes and... Um, and I've started obviously using one box, ran out and then started on the other box. I've still got quite a few left there. Um, and as you can see, towards the back when I got to the second layer, the tiles are a lot more pink than red and the actual greeny grey is darker. So I don't know if you can, I think you can see that on camera. Um, a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. They're down now. Half of them are going to be covered at this side here anyway by the stairs. Um, and at the back, I haven't quite decided what I want to do with the back yet. So 
Uh, yeah, it is a little bit annoying. I'm going to just wash them down now with some um, with a little sponge and then see how they're looking. And then the next job is to get grout in. OK, so they've all just been wiped down. What I did notice when they were wet is that the colour change was a lot less noticeable and it did make them a lot more vivid. So these are still drying. As you can see, they're still a bit damp in places. What I might actually do once I've grouted is go over with maybe some matte varnish and it might just make them um, that the colour change a little bit less noticeable. Um, so we'll, we'll have a think about that. Um, so in terms of mortaring... This is what I have. This is from Stacey's Miniature Masonry and it's uh, I have this pack left over from grouting the brickwork on my Tudor house. Um, so I, I'm not sure on the pricing of these actually at the minute. Um, yeah, I'm not sure at the pricing at the, at the current, but this is 500 grams. It's quite a hefty bag. Um, what I would say with this, just use a tiny little bit with some water. Um, and this is what I'm going to use to get it in all the joints and then I'm just going to wipe it off with a damp sponge after and that will grout it all with um, proper grout. So I'm just going to get a little mixing bowl. Um, when I say bowl, I mean a tiny little cup um, and we'll start putting a bit of this in, a bit of water um, and then we'll get cracking with that. So just remember when you're mixing this that um, a small amount of water goes a long way and the consistency you're looking for is sort of like that. It's not runny, it's almost like cement. Um, that's how I did it, the, do the uh, Tudor house, so uh, I think that should be okay. Um, so we'll get cracking. So all I'm doing is effectively um, getting some of this and just putting it in. And if you can see me there, just um, just obviously spreading it out just in that motion um, to get round all the little cracks and crevices. And don't worry too much about getting it on the walls because we can obviously remove that at the end with a sponge. Um, but obviously the, the less you get on there, the better. But yeah, don't worry too much about that. And we can always touch up if we need to as well. Okay, so effectively left with something like that. And I've just used a bit of excess to fill those gaps up where um, the door frame will go. Um, and yeah, that's perfect time now just to start sponging it all off. So this is the messy bit. So we will get cracking with that. Okay, and that's it all sponged down. So very much like bathroom grouting, tiling, etc. It's just a case of um, obviously putting it all on into the grooves and then using a, a very just damp sponge. So just getting rid of the water just so it's damp and then wiping it all around. Um, so yeah, wait till that's dry completely now and we'll come back and then give it um, a last shine and a bit of a buff. But can you see what I mean about the colours? You can hardly tell the colour difference when, when the tiles are wet. So, and I like the vibrancy actually of these. So I think what I'm probably going to do is varnish them with some matte varnish once it's all dry. And I think that'll really bring out the colour and those tiles at the back that are slightly different colour are going to be a lot less noticeable. Um, but I'll practice with a bit of that varnish on one tile first before I do the whole lot, which I'd always recommend if you're not sure how a finish is going to work out. Um, but yeah, really happy with that. Really happy with how that's looking. I can't wait to see it with the stairs in. It'll be nice to just get one little room more or less finished. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited. So we're, we need to wait for that to dry and we need to tackle the stairs. Okay, so stairs. The best part, I know, if you've been following along, you know I absolutely hate stairs. And for good reason, I just hate all the spindly bits, having to paint them, it's just little fiddly things and then sanding them and, and everything. But we are where we are, I've got eight of these to go, so I just need to get on with it. So, um, you saw me make uh, these little bits and we put the treads on. Um, so they're all done now, everything's painted up, I just need to start assembly. Now, I've actually been looking on YouTube myself today to try and have a look at some videos of stair assembly because generally I try to do everything together and I think that's probably where I've gone wrong in the past as well. Um, a careful consideration is where you want the newel posts to go, whether you want them on here or, and on the top or whether you want them here um, or here or here and, and so on and so on. Um, what I've decided to do, although I've got a lot of spindles, there are two packs here. So there's actually three, four, five, six, seven. There's actually seven spindles per each set of stairs. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's eight treads, as you can see. 
So I think because it's in a hallway and the space and everything, I think that newel post um, needs to be on here. And I think at the top, what I want to do is put a newel post there. So because as the stairs go into a new section, they come up here around and then they go up again, I'll probably have the new newel post um, Obviously it'll probably go on the first stair up then there. And I think that will look quite nice. Um, and then so I've got the newel post on there. So then I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these spindles going up there. So I think in the first instance, I need to glue these little spindles on here and they're gonna go just in the middle of the treads. Um, and then I need to measure up some of the uh, handrail and then I need to work out what I need to do with these as well. So uh, we'll get gluing these on first and then see where we are after that. Well, that wasn't too much fun, but they're all on now. So we'll leave them a minute to dry and then I'll start having to think about the um, newel post. So we've got it assembled. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, it's just a miserable experience. I hate doing stairs. It's just been a nightmare. I tried gluing the spindles on with normal, uh, the normal glue that I use, Gorilla Glue, wouldn't work, kept falling off. So I tried Super Glue, that wouldn't work, kept falling off, went back to Gorilla Glue, let it go tacky for a bit before I tried. And it's just been a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. But here we are, it's probably at least took me at least an hour um, just to get the spindles and that on. Um, this bit, obviously, we just need to put on at the top, um, but we'll need to glue that on um, once the um, once the hallway bit here, the little landing bit's done. So I'm going to leave that for now, um, and I'll probably just go and try these in place and see how they look. So there we are. The floor does need another polish, um, and we'll decide if we're putting some varnish or not on it. But you can see there now sort of the colour schemes and how the things are starting to come together a little bit. I'm not sure what to do with that back area yet. I think I might just have it as a bit of a boot room and just put some coat hooks and some shoes and that in there. I think that'll add a bit of interest and maybe an umbrella stand. Um, and then that top bit needs, um, I'm just going to have wood there. So that just needs to have some uh, wood cladding put on there and a little bit of white skirting going around. Um, and then we'll pretty much be done with that part. So uh, yeah, one room nearly, nearly complete. Um, I do need to have a think because I'm going to have a light come down here as well from this top part. So I do need to start having a think now as well about electrics for the house. But I think I'll leave that discussion to the next video. So thanks very much. And until next time, see you later. Take care.